figure out what they're doing because yeah. uh, this is the way it naturally looks right now. You can see how it backs up all the way, all the way that direction. And all the creatures depend on this flow in and out to, in order for the animals to live in this, in this uh, salina. Well, these are shorebirds. These are uh, wetland birds that, that uh, are feeding here on the, in the salina. And they depend upon the worms and the organisms that live in the mud in order to survive. And the animals that live in the mud depend upon this outward and inward flow from the ocean. Every time the tide goes up, the water comes in. And for a couple weeks, it nourishes the mud flats and then the water goes out, it dries up. But the eggs are still, the eggs are still in the mud. And the eggs are, are waiting for the next tide and then the eggs come alive again and you have the hatching of the little animals in the in the mud and this is what keeps the salina going is because of the 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 drying out and the and then the the tide comes back in uh, it's not meant to be permanent water it's meant to go in and out so that the animals survive some of the birds that nest here are protected by antillian law the that would be the least terns that nest on the shoreline and they're, they're little tiny terns. They're, they're all, another name for them are Antillian terns. And uh, they're quite common in this area. This is one of the most, uh, uh, one of the best designated sites here in near, near Kralendijk that you can go to. And these are, these are a species that are red listed, which means that they have been declared uh, endangered globally because their numbers are very low. Bonaire has become a center for, for a very large population of these birds that nest here on, on, on Bonaire because they're very, globally, you can't find them very, very much anywhere else. So least terns are the ones that really need this type of habitat in order to survive and mainly not interfered with by humans. Humans uh, coming into the area they're going to make the birds leave the nest, and then in the hot tropical sun, the, the young will die. They've already destroyed quite a few of the nests that were uh, that the adults were already on the eggs. There's no eggs hatched yet. Uh, I've been checking uh, the Antillian terns at another site over at Gotumir, which is a Ramsar site, and the the. The adults, females, are still incubating eggs. They haven't hatched yet. But they destroyed the eggs, they destroyed the nest uh, because of the, the moving of the, of the material, the dirt on the side of the, side of the shore. And if you look out here right now real close, they always got their feet wet. There's all kinds of little tiny shorebirds that are picking around in the mud. And I see them moving right now right not within uh, 100 feet of us. So it's very critical habitat for these birds on their migration, going to the Arctic Circle to nest. This is their wintering grounds. But now this is the nesting season for the birds. So most of the migratory birds have already gone through. And they use this during the winter. They're quite number, numerous uh, migratory birds, little shorebirds, sandpipers primarily of about four different species of sandpipers and there is a there's a migratory protection act signed by canada north america mexico that says you do not bother migratory birds it's a migratory bird treaty act signed by three countries and everybody supposedly pays attention to this protection of migratory birds but these these birds, uh, another wetland is being destroyed. This is what's happening throughout their migration round, or the wetlands are being taken over because it's the cheapest land for some rich developer to buy and convert it to condos by building it up and making it more, uh, more attractive to humans by 
putting in what they're going to do here is making permanent water out of it and keep and they're going to kill the flow back and forth. So that's that's what we're thinking is going to happen at this particular site. We don't understand how they could have done this without getting government approval. The government is supposed to be looking after the wetlands uh, on the island because nobody else will do it and the government is supposed to be giving permits to change the salinas 